Assalamu alaikum and welcome to One Path Live. You've heard of Channel 9, Channel 7, Channel 10. You've heard of YouTube and Netflix. Well, tonight marks the launch of Australia's first Muslim media network. Joining me on the panel tonight is the director of Stories in the Park, father of eight, our very own Sean McNulty. Sean, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, Mohammed. Thank you. It's lovely to be here and nice to be remembered for Stories in the Park as well as my ability to procreate. But <laughs> sure. thank you anyway. Thank you. Um, you've been involved in many Muslim projects in Australia. One Path Network, how's it different? Look, it's different because this one, I mean, look, I've worked on some really nice projects, but this one really has the potential to be a game changer. This, you know, the, the stuff that's gone into this, absolutely awesome. So I'm, I'm very happy to be Thank here. Thank you for joining us. Also on the panel tonight is the former head of the Muslim Student Association, someone who's very familiar with all da'wah mediums in Australia. He's also one of the founders of Silent is Betrayal, Hisham Krayam. Hisham, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Hamad, very excited to be here. Alhamdulillah, I had the chance to witness the formation of MSA New South Wales. Had a chance to witness the formation of Silence is Betrayal. And now here at another cornerstone for the Muslim community. I'm so excited, as I'm sure everyone else is. Thank you very much, Hisham. Ladies and gentlemen, the Australian Muslim community has witnessed several major milestones in the last few decades. The building of the iconic Lakemba Mosque. The formation of the Muslim Students Association. The widening of burial sites. And of course, the recent rapid expansion of Duggies. Well, tonight marks another massive milestone in the Australian Islamic community, the launch of One Path Network. We have a massive show on tonight. The launch of any network warrants only the finest guests. Our guests tonight include Associate Professor Dr. Muhammad Abdullah from Brisbane, Digital Dawah Extraordinaire Kamal Saleh, the winner of the Mall 2013 Hilal Karabali, Australian Sincere Enthusiast Jeff Abu Bakr Zawad, and of course, the CEO of One Path Network himself, Malaz Najani. Tonight's show is brought to you by our sponsors. Very grateful for them. Human Appeal International Australia. Dougie's Auburn. Fatela Small Goods. And I'm told that there was a race between Bingley and Harvey Norman, given the recent influx of religious Muslims flocking to purchase TVs now that they're halal. Well, Harvey Norman won. Go Harvey Norman. Go. Okay. <laughs> to kick off tonight's show, Hisham Krayam will present the latest from the Muslim community. Hisham. Thank you, Muhammad. With prices of burial space on the rise, Muslim families are being forced to look away from Rookwood Cemetery for more economically viable means. Gerard Rathbourne has more. Rookwood Cemetery in Sydney's southwest is the burial place for thousands of Muslims. It is no secret then that the community has been troubled over the fate of the grounds for the last number of years, with particular concern towards the rapidly decreasing number of plots available for burials. This acute shortage has resulted in families seeking burial for their loved ones in Riverstone, further west of Sydney's metropolitan area. In a press release, the Reserve Trust states that under instructions from the Minister, the last major portion of land remaining, known as Lot 10, be allocated 50% for Muslim burials and 50% for Jewish burials. This new land can accommodate 6,000 people in double depth plots and has been operational since April last year. Research suggests that by 2030, the Muslim population in Australia will rise by 80% to 700,000 people. The question remains as to how the Muslim community, and indeed the Australian government, will be able to meet the demands for burial plots as the community rapidly matures. I'm Jamal Rathbourne, reporting from Rookwood Cemetery for the One Path Network. A high influx of Aussie Muslims have been travelling to Africa over the last few months, but not to undertake a safari. Muna, One Path's correspondent, has more. Far from home, Australian Muslims have journeyed thousands of kilometres to the heart of Africa, determined to make a real difference. Seeing the opportunity to deliver much-needed Islamic knowledge to Togo's villages, Australian charity Global Islamic Mission travelled far from home to answer this call. This charitable work has carried the message of Islam to hundreds of villages and their families. 
facilitated the building of 35 mosques, 45 water wells and 8 schools, teaching native languages and Islamic studies. Further development of facilities and infrastructure for the villages in Togo is a continuous endeavour, with an effort to employ local villagers and teach them sustainable farming methods. Charities such as GIM are effectively providing meaningful support to those who need it most. From African villages to Australian shores, over 30 Australians a month are embracing Islam. Um Harun has more. In the western suburbs of Sydney, Ahmed Youssef and his team of volunteers prepare themselves for another weekend of work. It is their dedication to da'wah, or calling people to the Islam, and their unwavering belief in Allah's will that has facilitated an average of 20 reversions to Islam per month. And then one week we had one guy come to us here in Parramatta, and he just walked up to one of the brothers and he said, look, how do I become Muslim? And we said, how did you come to this conclusion? He said, look, some guy gave me a pamphlet I had to read, and I think I'm ready to become a Muslim. The One Day, One Message initiative, founded in 2012 by the Muslim students at Macquarie University, is another successful example of street dawah. Through the distribution of information bags and colourful balloons, volunteers have organised events where members of the general public were gifted with the message of Islam. It is grassroots dawah initiatives such as these that continue to strive toward a more accurate understanding of what Islam truly means. This is Um Harun reporting for One Path Network. And that's all from the news desk. Hamad. Thank you very much, Hisham. There's definitely a lot happening in the Muslim community, and I'm glad there's someone there finally able to track and report on it. For me, One Path Network is a breath of fresh air. It's an opportunity to express the teachings of Islam as we know them. Sean. Yeah, look, I think it probably goes without saying that Islam isn't being communicated uh, in an accurate or fair way. I, I think that's stating the obvious. Um, and even when some of the stations have the right intentions, you know, you've got your ABC, your, your SBS, whoever, how often do they actually get it technically right? I mean, we're picking holes in it. It's not right. Fair enough. I, I, don't even get me started on Channel 9 or 7 or 10. No comment. No, sorry, I Murray. I com <laughs> completely agree with you, Sean. Um, you know, Australia has a population of 22 million people, and the only thing that they're finding out about Islam, for those who have not interacted with Muslim, are what they hear on the radio, and see on TV. Yeah, and no, I think that, that trend's true as well at university. You know, that the common person you speak to at university is saying the same thing, mm. that they don't know much about Islam, and it shows the importance of an initiative like this, really to establish a communication with these people. Look, um, I've always wondered that if the Prophet wasallam was available during our time, how would he be involved in the da'wah? What mediums would he وسلم, use? Will the Prophet وسلم, embrace social media? Would he have a Twitter account? To answer some of these questions and more, we've flown in an expert in Australian Islamic life. We're very excited to have on the panel tonight, Dr. Muhammad Abdullah. Associate Professor Muhammad Abdullah is regarded as one of Australia's most respected Muslim leaders. Almost difficult to comprehend that such a limited God could create a magnificent cosmos. Combining the roles of a serious academic scholar, public intellectual and religious leader. He is an associate professor at the School of Humanities at Griffith University and the founding director of the Griffith Islamic Research Unit. Brothers and sisters, please welcome to the stage our respected guest, Sheikh Muhammad Abdullah. Thank you for joining us tonight. Pleasure. Okay, could I start by asking, was media used in the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him? And if so, how? Alhamdulillah, Well, the intent of media is to persuade. It is meant to express ideas, change people's views, attract or invite people to certain worldviews, perspectives, and so forth. And if that's what we understand by media, then definitely that was used by the, the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. In fact, the entirety of the message of the Qur'an is to persuade people to change their minds about certain ideas and views. And I think this is one of the most powerful tools of media today. And therefore, of course, historically, human beings have always used it as a medium to persuade. And certainly during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, in fact, it is the essence of balagh. It is the essence of communicating a message in a way that can change the minds of listeners. I think that's, a, that's an amazing perspective, but the question for us is why and how can media be used to benefit Australia? In many ways, it can be used, one, to benefit Muslims themselves by enhancing their understanding of their own faith, 
and more importantly, allowing them to contextualize their understanding of the faith so they can live within, not against the context in which, we, in, in which they are interacting. So there are so many Muslims out there who have not heard the message properly from scholars, from jurists, from leading scholars, and so this is a wonderful opportunity that allows them to hear about Islam from authentic sources. But also, and importantly, the non-Muslim audience, the Australian community, needs to hear an alternative voice about Islam that is genuine, that is authentic, that is fair income, if you wish, and that can allow them to perhaps begin to think about Islam in a different way. Thank you. Doctor, I, I guess my question is, on that note, what are the ramifications for the Muslim community if we don't build a media network like One Path? Well, at the outset, silence is approval. We know for a fact that Islamophobia out there is rampant. We know for a fact that racism is an unfortunate phenomenon in the society and Muslims are a recipient of that. If we don't involve ourselves in a media outlet such as this, then we will leave the field open for others to continue to propagate a pejorative and negative view about Islam and Muslims. And we sit idle without counteracting that perspective. This is a powerful medium of counteracting that pejorative, negative stereotypes that is unfortunately so rampant there or out there against Islam and Muslims. Fair enough. And look, um, <clears throat> excuse me, one final question for you, uh, if you'll permit me. If we were to do a one-path version of Q&A, uh, who would you like to see on the panel with you? Other than yourselves? Of, of course. <laughs> I would, well, I've been thinking about it. Maybe if it's a discussion on Islam, really, I'd like to convince our Prime Minister about Islam. I'd like to have him on the panel, to have a nice chat with Inshallah, him. Inshallah, that him. would be nice. Look, I was hold that if someone like me can find Islam, absolutely anyone can. Inshallah, Inshallah. Mr. Abba does too. Uh, look, Jazakallah Khair, Professor, for your time. Pleasure. It's been very beneficial for all of us, I'm sure. Some real food for thought there, boys. Absolutely. Okay, you, good stuff. Thank you very much. Now, look, we're going to go to uh, a break now, but first, coming up. Coming up after the break, winner of the Mole 2013, Hilal Kara Ali. Muslim YouTuber, Kamal Saleh. Still to come, Sheikh Abu Bakr Zaud. CEO of One Path Network, Brother Malaz Majani. Dougie's Grill Auburn, providing a unique, fresh taste of authentic Mediterranean cuisine and Portuguese-style chicken, all carefully prepared using our addictive fresh recipes and finished with our unique blend of herbs and spices. Choose from our vast menu of burgers, wings, mixed plates, charcoal, chicken, salads and much, much more. All food products are halal certified and private rooms are available. Addicted to Dougie's Grill Auburn, voted by the Daily Telegraph in the top 10 of Sydney's best burgers.